Alright folks, today we're taking a look at the ICOM ID5100A dual band transceiver. It's a D-Star Radio 2, so let's check it out today on K5ATA Ham Radio. Alright folks, as we get started, if y'all would, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and hit that bell. That lets you get notified anytime time we have new content, and it just helps out with the algorithm, helps other hands find our stuff. Also, um, there's an Amazon.com affiliate link down below. It doesn't cost you anything extra if you buy stuff through there, but I put some of the cool stuff that's in the shack or in our classroom station, or just some stuff I think is cool. Um, and we do get a little bit of money out of that to help support the school club as well as the Patreon link down below. Um, if you feel so inclined, we use that money to try to help build our middle school and high school club station at the school where I teach. So, y'all, I appreciate it. All right, here it is. The ICOM ID5100A Deluxe. ICOM sent me this bad boy to take a look at. And I do realize this is not a brand new on-the-market radio. But, it's still a relatively new and definitely a, a current model radio, I guess I should say. So, kind of take a quick look and see what we've got here. It's definitely packed in there well. Alright, let's see here. Take these off. Um... And see. All right. Instruction book, instruction manual, and a CD. Lots of instruction books. Operating guide, quick reference guide. Now here's the test. Can I read this without glasses on? Kind of. All right. Okay. Let's see. This is obviously going to be the radio itself, which is actually a little smaller than I expected, I guess. Keep that. Let's see here. Ah, here it is. This is the head unit to it. Man, that screen's big. It's got the fancy dancy screen protected stuff on there. Put that down in there. Alright, this is going to be our microphone and our head kit, our head cable I should say. It's the HM207, out of curiosity. So if you've got an older ICOM, this is a microphone for my 2100. Remarkably similar, obviously, in appearance. This one's very well used. It's been a great radio for years. It's the IC2100, I think. All right. Typical. ICOM's always had nice-feeling nice microphones. Let's see what we got here. All right. Magnetic, whatever that dude's for. All right, so this appears, yeah, this is gonna be a backing plate for mounting, and I admit that thing mounts on that. All right, very cool. So that's that. We are going to fire this thing up in the shack and check it out. I do not have a D-Star repeater near me. 
Um, but I do have a hot spot that will do D-Star. And we are taking a camping trip here shortly. In fact, maybe by the time this video comes out, we'll be on that camping trip. And so you should be able to see some D-Starage from there. Yeah, I just tokened that word, D-Starage. It's mine. It's kind of like potable. This is just your standard foam plug looking thing if I, or connector, if my old eyes are seeing correctly. That appears to just be a straight through cable, meaning green on one end, ends on the same pin on the other end. There's no crossover to go to anything. I used to install all this. There we go. There's the viewer after. Yep, it appears to be straight through, so uh, if I'm not mistaken, your standard telephone cable straight through. So if that's not long enough, um, I'm sure ICOM sells one, or you can bust out a phone cable, I would imagine, to see how that goes. I need to go ahead and take this off of here, because, well, that's the way I am. It's just satisfying. Yeah, not as satisfying as coffee, but it's pretty satisfying. All right, let's see if I can power this bad boy up. All right, I admit I couldn't wait. So I unhooked the 2100 I have here in the shack. And I've got the 5100 kind of in its place. It's sitting on the bench, obviously, but... It's, I've taken the antenna and the coax out of the back of the 2100, stuck it on the back of this. It's a dual band antenna up there, so we're good. Took the power line from it, and let's see what she does. Voltage readout. Oh, look at that display. Nice. All right, squelch. I got a squelch. We go. Independent squelches. Oh wow. This is nice. I can I can read that without glasses, guys. This is a good thing. So let's just 146 dot six one which is it automatically puts the repeater split up there, which is nice. It says hey yo this is a negative tone. I need to send a tone. How do I set what the tone is? Got like 8,000 options here. I like to try to see if I can fun use this sucker right out of the box. It's Pardon that. Listen to this. Oh, maybe not. You were hearing my fire radio. I was about to crack open the instruction book, and then I said, Hey, I've got a handy dandy notebook like Blue's Clues. Let's see if it's in here. About the touch area. Oh, I've got more stuff down here at the bottom. Those I can hit home menu. There we go. I bet I have to do that. Repeater tone. Here we go. Here's how you do it. Look at that. That is handy. That's way better than having to go through 93 pages of manual. All right. Repeater tone. 107.2. Let's try this one. You got dual VFO, so look, you can really freak people out and go both ways. 147 dot 330. I'm sure there's a faster way to get that, but it's also the same tone. Oh, look at that, my tone turned off. K 
K5ATA testing. It opened. Take an ear off in case somebody actually answers. Okay, so what I did is I went on ahead and I mounted the little plate on the back. It's just two magnets, really strong magnets by the way, kind of a pain in the butt to get the screw through there. So put the screw through first and then uh, kind of slide the thing down at the magnet down on the hole there and that's I found that the best way to get it in there I mean this is a secure magnet to hold that in place in there so and then this is gonna mount onto a plate or something to pull it off I haven't gotten to that point yet but this is so that you can take this out of the car just with one simple unplugging here and take it with you so it doesn't have to sit out in the parking lot or whatever wherever you are all right so I've turned it on um, kind of poked around in here a minute programmed in the local Oxford Mississippi repeater and it worked great I have not saved that to memory yet so we're gonna go ahead and save that one to memory because I use that one pretty much every day so let's see memory that's with the MW button we're gonna hit oh you can't really see that let me see if I can get a better angle on that for you Maybe if I turn that off uh, let me back up a second all right so I want to program that into memory I'm going to hit the MW button and we're just going to hit the right to new channel. I've never used one of these before so it doesn't look terribly uh, difficult here. Let's see, I wonder how many letters I get to put in here. O X F O R D. And we have a couple there so I'm going to go ahead and label that B H F enter. Uh, looks like I can put it in memory banks and stuff too. It's FM, it's duplex with a tone. Channel select. So I can select what channel I want it in. And I'm actually going to put that. I don't know why that one's there. I'm going to put it right there and right. Okay, so it's asking me if I want to overwrite the one that was already there. I'm going to say yes. And it's in there. Now it doesn't show the name of it, so let's see. Oh, maybe if I go to. Oops, remember these are. Yep, there it is. So it shows it, so I just have to use the. Uh, make sure I'm in memory mode there. Alright, so. Let's go ahead and. Alright, so um, another way to put in frequencies. Alright, so you go back out to the FO mode, 146610. wonder if there's an enter button on that. There is. So the enter button's just that one right there. Okay, and that's in there. It's got my duplex in there. Remember, I need, need to have a tone on it. Because this is the same tone. So... Tone, tone, and I think we've already got it set for the right tone. Yeah, one hundred seven point two, which means now I can go here. I can memory write. I'm going to write to a new channel. If you hit write to select the channel, it's going to be whatever channel you already have there. I'm actually going to put this one. You know what? I'm going to put it on channel 2 after all. Because I'm going to make channel 1 simplex. Right? Right to blank channel? Yes. Alright, so that's in there. So it's extremely easy to program analog channels in there. And to get back to those, we just.
All right, so there's channel one. There's channel two. So that was easy enough. Okay. Um, before you can use the D star, you apparently have to register on a D star gateway, and I just did that. I don't know, maybe 30, 45 minutes ago. So um, let's go ahead and set up some of this other stuff we haven't set up yet. So when you go to menu, my station. All right. So we want to put our call sign in there. Okay, so you can do long hold on that, hit edit, K5, A-T-A, hit enter. All right, let's see what else we have. <clears throat> Function. All right, so you can, okay, so you can change your speeds and stuff like that. I'm re um, programming this thing completely without a cable. I don't have the cable with it, so remote mic key apparently. Oh, that's probably for the Bluetooth and whatnot, which I may. Actually, I will. I'll go ahead and get that and do some videos on how to do that. This is all your data stuff set up. Let's see what else we have. I already set the display, but you know what? Um, you can have that display set to auto dim at night and so you can tell it you know you can have it auto dim here or you can do it by time um, so you can have it start at 6 p.m. and then you know go back to bright at 0600 all right so let's see what else we have in here time set because we're obviously not set yet all right, date and time. It is, well, it picked it up. Although the time's not right. It is currently 6, which is 18, 12. Although, you know what? I bet that was set for UTC. Because we're minus 5, so now it would have been 11. I don't remember what it was on. I'm going to. I'm going to leave that set for UTC. We all need to think in UTC anyway. All right, so 18, 5, yeah, that's right. 23, 12, 6, 6, boom. GPS time correct, UTC offset. Oops, I'm minus 5. Auto power off. So you can set it to turn the power off automatically. Um, 30 minutes, 60 minutes. I'm not going to mess with that yet. I might if I end up having dead batteries in my truck. All right, folks. So I've had the radio in the truck driving around for, I guess it's been about three weeks now. Um, got an antenna mounted up. I'll show you how I mounted that in another video. Um, but overall, I've been really pleased with the radio. It's really easy to read. It's got a nice big screen. Um, easy to you know, navigate the menu with just a quick glance, not get distracted or anything like that. I found the audio quality to be superb. Um, the speaker, I did have a little bit of concern about the speaker because the unit itself is actually kind of down between my seat and my console. There's like this pocket thing down there. And so I worried I might need an external speaker or something, and I don't. Um, the speaker is plenty loud. I can hear it without any trouble. Um, even with music playing in the truck, if you know my wife's listening to tunes or something, I have it on. Um, the signal reports I get as far as my audio quality coming out have been really good. Um, overall, so far, I am extremely pleased with this radio. Um, this was just a quick little how to get started out of the box. Uh, several more videos coming this way. Um, on the 5100, we're going to look at how to get this thing programmed for D-Star. And it'll also include a little bit of how to make sure your hotspot's set up for that, too. So, y'all, I do appreciate it. Hit that like button. Hit subscribe. Y'all take care. And we hope to see you on the air. 7-3.